so this video is all about chapter 20 from this book, which is all about the saints. And this book, as well as all of the other ladies who are posting about chapter 20, are linked below. So definitely watch their videos after you watch this. First, let me just start off with Catholics do not worship saints. I explored Protestantism when I was younger and I have a lot of Protestants in my life. You can watch my conversion story as a cradle Catholic video to learn a bit about that. But because of my little bit of history with Protestantism, um, I heard so many people saying that Catholics worship Mary and the saints. And even though I knew that was completely false, because that was just in my ear so much, I kind of avoided the saints. In recent years, I've developed my devotion a bit to Mary. Just did a video about that, so you can check that out. And now I'm really enjoying learning about the lives of the saints because we know Jesus is the ultimate example of how to love God the Father and how to live on this earth, but Jesus is God, so he's perfect. <laughs> And we're human and we're not perfect. So the saints were also human and they lived beautiful lives for God on earth and they are such an inspiration to us and such a comfort to us. If we are going through something tough, we can look to a saint who has gone through the very same thing and find comfort that they got through it and find inspiration to be strong through whatever struggle it is. So my first relationship with a saint, I guess, was Saint Cecilia. I chose her to be my confirmation saint because she is the patron saint of musicians. And I am a musician and I started singing for the church when I was a kid. When I was 14, I started singing weddings and funerals. So when I was confirmed at about 16 years old, I think, it just seemed like the perfect fit to pick Saint Cecilia. I don't really have an intercessory relationship with Saint Cecilia or any saint right now, but I'm sure as I grow in my faith, I will get in the habit of asking the saints to pray for me more and more. I love that the author reminds us, or anyone new to Catholicism reading the book, that it's not that we're praying to the saints. We clearly do not worship the saints. We're praying with the saints. Just as you'd ask a neighbor, a grandparent to pray for you when you're going through something tough, we can ask the very holy and pure saints in heaven to pray for us. And it's sort of a pet peeve of mine when some Christians will say they're dead, they can't hear your prayers. But if you believe in Jesus, you know that Jesus promises his followers everlasting life. So Jesus conquered death so that we can live with him forever. So if you are a follower of Jesus, when you leave earth, you are alive more than ever with Jesus. And any love you have on earth, which the saints had a lot of love on earth, that's why they're saints, will only increase once they go to heaven because we know God is love. So they are so filled with love, love for God, love for the body of Christ, which all Christians are a part of. So of course they're praying for us. So I think it's so beautiful that we all pray for each other and we're all part of the body of Christ. Even saints that were never formally canonized by the church, a lot of people don't know how to tackle the paperwork involved with canonizing a saint, but obviously there are so many holy people from earth that are now saints. So if you had a family member who was very holy, who loved God, who loved you, and they have passed, definitely ask them to pray for you. I don't see why you would not. Of course they prayed for you when they were on earth, 
So of course they'd pray for you now in heaven. A lot of the canonized saints were popes or priests or religious sisters, nuns. But I love what Father James Martin says in this book. He says, the remarkable mother saints like St. Monica, St. Elizabeth, St. Dorothy Day, those mother saints are powerful reminders that holiness does not have to mean living in a convent or founding a religious order. It simply means being a loving person in whatever task that is yours. So whatever your vocation is, whatever your family life is, if you are being loving, loving God, loving the people in your life, you are on your way to sainthood. So right now I am loving St. Faustina. I have the Divine Mercy Chaplet app, which I mentioned in a previous video. I'll link it below. But with that app, you can get a daily text message from her journal, and it's like receiving a daily text message from St. Faustina. Some very sweet sisters gave me this pendant of St. Faustina. The other side has Jesus's Divine Mercy, of course. Right now, I'm also loving St. Rita of Cassia. She appeals to me because she was a peacemaker. I am definitely a peacemaker. I really hate confrontation. I don't like when people debate in such a nasty way and just look down on the other person on the other side of the debate. I feel that most people are moderate. Most people want the best for humankind, and I think we can find a compromise, find something we agree on in any issue, in any debate. So I am definitely a natural peacemaker. Saint Rita is also the patron saint against infertility. So my husband and I, we would love for our family to grow, but I am trying to give it to God and trust in his timing and I am loving this time that I have with my husband. We have a lot of quality time with each other and uh, just recently we had our niece and nephew over for part of their summer vacation and we had a lot of fun with them and now they're back home with their parents um, but we're so blessed to have that time to do that. The author talks about Saint Bernadette of Lourdes She's the patron saint of the poor and sick. Many people visit Lourdes for healing, and I have some holy water from Lourdes, and I gave a lot of water to friends and family. The author also mentions Saint Anthony of Padua. Saint Anthony, I feel, is pretty popular among Catholics because he's the patron saint of lost articles, and everyone loses things all the time. He also was a gifted speaker. So I've actually been to the Basilica in Padova, Italy. We call it Padua. And I've seen St. Anthony's chin and tongue. They're both displayed in gold at that basilica. I went to St. Peter's Basilica. 91 popes are buried there. St. Ignatius and St. Peter. My parish right now is St. Paul's. I've been to the Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls in Rome, which holds the tomb of St. Paul. The Scala Sancta are in Rome thanks to St. Helena. Thank you, St. Helena. The Scala Sancta are the holy stairs that were the stairs that led to Pontius Pilate's Praetorium in his palace. The day of Jesus's crucifixion he walked those stairs. So St. Helena moved those stairs from Jerusalem to Rome. They're near the Basilica of St. John Lateran. No one is allowed to walk on those holy stairs with their feet, but you can kneel up the stairs. I'm so happy that we were able to do that together. And I have to say it was probably uh, my favorite thing about Rome. This isn't really a saint story, but just thinking of Italy, I have to mention in Florence, uh, there's a church, small, modest church, St. Ambrose. A priest there left some wine in a chalice after mass. I guess he was distracted. And the next day he found blood in 
that chalice. If you are ever in Florence, definitely go to that little church and see that Eucharistic miracle. Another cool saint is Saint Bartolo Longo. He was actually a satanic priest. He was worshiping Satan and he is now a saint in the Catholic Church. So he's an inspiration to anyone you know who's like a hateful atheist or a witch or something. <laughs> There's still hope for them. He was given a painting of Our Lady and I think it was in terrible condition and he restored it. And that painting is at the Shrine of the Virgin of the Rosary in Pompeii, Italy. There have been alleged miracles associated with that painting. I was so blessed to go to Mass there and see the painting. I don't have any pictures of the actual painting. I don't think it was allowed, um, but it's a picture of Our Lady holding the baby Jesus. There are stars around her and Jesus. She's holding the rosary and St. Dominic and St. Catherine of Siena are below her and Jesus looking up. Another cool saint, St. Vincent Martyr. He is the patron saint of Valencia, Spain and Lisbon, Portugal. And when the Roman emperor of his time was persecuting Christians and not allowing Christianity to be practiced, he was captured, um, put in jail. He actually converted one of his guards because the guard was just so amazed by his faith and his peace. And St. Vincent was allowed to be freed if he denied Christianity. I think it was something with the scriptures, like he had to burn the scriptures or something, but St. Vincent did not. He was so confident in his faith. He was like, I think he said, do whatever you want to me, but I will never give up my faith in Jesus and Christianity. So St. Vincent's right arm and hand is in the Valencia Cathedral. Also at the Valencia Cathedral, one of the supposed holy chalices from the Last Supper is there. And that has been defended that that chalice is from the Last Supper. I will link more info about that below. So speaking of the Last Supper, gotta mention these saints here in my dining room. We don't know the seating arrangement of the Last Supper. Uh, this is just da Vinci's painting. Um, I do like that he did this though, so we're not looking at anyone's backs. From left to right, we have St. Bartholomew, St. James, St. Andrew, uh, Judas obviously is not a saint. He was replaced by St. Matthias. And we have St. Peter, St. John, and of course, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And then we have St. Thomas, St. James the Greater, St. Philip, St. Matthew, St. Jude Thaddeus, and St. Simon. The author also mentions teaching the lives of the saints to children. I think that's so beautiful. A Catholic school run by Dominican sisters in the last city I lived in had a sale and I bought a bunch of these saint cards. I have St. Teresa of Calcutta, St. Rose of Lima, St. Therese of Lisieux. So each saint card has a virtue on it that that particular saint definitely had. So St. Teresa of Calcutta definitely had patience. And on the back it has the meaning of patience, a prayer to Jesus for the virtue of patience, and relevant scripture. I really like the prayer with this one. Dear God, help me to wait without complaining, to see you in my neighbor, and to let your grace enter this moment so that I may not lose my patience. So any non-Catholic watching this, this is such a good example of how the saint inspires us to be more patient. They are human. We do not worship Saint Teresa. We pray to God, it says, dear God, and we pray for the virtue of patience. But obviously Saint Teresa is so inspirational. And you know, if you're starting to lose your temper on your spouse, 
or your child or your dog, you can remember how patient and how loving St. Teresa was on earth and is in heaven and let her inspire you to be patient with your loved ones and strangers and everyone. I also have a saint's bracelet, which I like. Again, if you're not Catholic, this is just like having a charm bracelet. And maybe you have little pictures of your children or grandchildren or a locket and you have a picture of a grandparent in your locket. You don't worship those family members. You just recognize that they are part of your family and you love them. So these saints are just a nice reminder whenever I'm not being very virtuous, being very loving, remind me to be better, to be more Christ-like, and just to be on my way to being a saint like them. I've got the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the Virgin Mary, Our Lady of Guadalupe, the Holy Family with Saint Joseph, the baby Jesus, and Mary, our Lady of Fatima, Jesus, the Divine Mercy, Padre Pio. I love Padre Pio. I was so blessed to see some of his relics recently. An Italian priest came to my city and shared stories about Padre Pio and meeting him when he was young. St. Patrick. I have some Irish heritage, so I love St. Patrick. He was a wonderful missionary. Michael, the Archangel. St. Nicholas, or this could be St. Augustine, St. Benedict, St. Maximus. There are a lot of saints with uh, long white beards, but my guess is St. Nicholas. And St. Anthony of Padua. I love St. Anthony. He loved animals so much. He loved all of creation. I also love learning about saints who loved animals. We all know St. Francis of Assisi, love St. Francis of Assisi, uh, but there are actually a lot of saints who loved animals, who loved all of God's creation. St. John Bosco, St. Blaise, St. Roche, St. Basil. Just hopped into my car to show you my little angel that I have in my car because that's the only time I really ask for protection from my guardian angel because I think that is the most dangerous place is on the road. Um, so yeah, be careful out there driving. Ask your guardian angel to be there for you and to protect you. Oh, while I'm in my car, I just remembered my women's group just passed around this great article about the communion of saints and how the saints hear our prayers. And when you think about it, the only way... A human in heaven could hear our prayers because they have no power is through God's power. So our prayers go to God and only through God can a saint, a human in heaven, hear our prayers. And it's so beautiful because it's the number three. It's you asking for intercession, God, of course, and the person praying for you either on earth or in heaven. So three are involved. And if you notice, God sort of has a theme with three. Um, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus the Son. That's three. We're made in the image and likeness of God with minds, bodies, and souls. That's three. The Holy Family um, had St. Joseph, Mary, and the baby Jesus. Again, three. So I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, I will link that below. I also find inspiration from people on earth who are not saints yet. I love Pope Francis. I think he will be a saint. As you all know, Pope Francis first visited the United States a few years ago, and his first prayer service in the United States was a beautiful service and I was so blessed to be a part of that choir. So anything about Pope Francis, I love. I also find a lot of inspiration from holy Catholic people in my life. I don't know if they will ever be canonized saints by the church, but I know when they leave earth, they will be with Jesus and we're all part of this beautiful spiritual family and we all help each other grow in virtue and to ultimately love God and love Jesus and the Holy Spirit and to just accept God's will for our lives 
joyfully and with so much love. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely click on all the other ladies linked below. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Check out any saints that you have in your parish when you're at Mass this weekend and maybe learn about a new saint. And I'll see you next time. Bye!